What's up, everybody? Ho, ho, ho! It's your boy, NornRed89 here, and you know what time it is, the Christmas season. Christmas is right around the corner, and what I wanted to do today was stop, and we're gonna rank my top 10 favorite Christmas horror films, with a couple honorable mentions as well. So these are the best, the brightest, the goriest, and most violent, and my favorites of the Christmas horror films. But that means it's just my list, my personal opinion, and I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section. Share your list or share some of the films if I didn't bring up some. Share some awesome films in the comments. I would love to hear from all of you because that's the best thing about us. We're all different. We all have our own opinions. And like I said, let's get into this video and ranking some awesome Christmas horror films. Roll it. Let's get right into this list and kick it off with a couple honorable mentions that we're going to get on with right away. And one is going to be Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale from 2010. This is a Finnish film, and I believe you can catch this film on Tubi or Pluto TV or even Hulu. It's a bunch of places you could stream this one, so there's no way you should be missing this one. Like I said, it's a Finnish film. It's also got some English in it as well, but there are subtitles, and I like this one because it's kind of this crazy take on a Christmas tale story, you know what I mean? These two kids are finding out that there's these Americans that are kind of excavating something in a mountain nearby, and what the kids think it is, is the tomb of a long lost Santa Claus. But in this world, in this theme, it's not necessarily the nice Santa Claus that we know today or that we think of bringing gifts. It's more of a kind of evil Krampus-like Santa Claus, but it's a very good film got a good heart to it and I like the father and son they have a great dynamic and an amazing story in this film next up we have Santa's sleigh from 2005 this is starring Bill Goldberg you might recognize him from the WCW the wrestling world in general and he plays a wild rage filled killing Santa Claus who finally gets to be the demonic evil Santa Claus that he's always wanted to be you know he's been doing all the good things bringing presents and being such a nice guy for hundreds and hundreds of years but now he finally is going to be evil again and it has to do with like this kind of tournament that he lost to this one character's grandfather and it's just really cool this one kind of feels like almost like a Christmas Carol type you know story thing it's got this really nice animation sequences too as well so yeah Santa Slay is definitely one I highly recommend checking out and I believe this one is streaming on Amazon Prime with a premium subscription type thing, you know, kind of thing. And that's where you can check this one out. So starting off, kicking off the top 10 list with P2, probably the one that has the weakest title out of all the films on this list, but P2 is an amazing Christmas horror film. This is takes or ugh, came out in 2007. You could currently catch this on Tubi or Pluto TV. It stars Rachel Nichols and Wes Bentley. And man, this is such an amazing film with a small cast. And I like the fact that it takes place in one location. It takes place in like an office building and a parking garage. And those are our only locales pretty much. And Wes Bentley and Rachel Nichols do such a fabulous job. There's such a tension throughout this whole film as Rachel, she plays Angela, who is uh, staying late to work on Christmas Eve, I believe it is, or Christmas Day. And she's going to go to her family's party, but she ends up being stuck in the garage. And Wes Bentley is kind of the garage security guard. And he, he's nuts. He's a psychopath. And he really just wants someone to hang out and spend time with for Christmas. But, man, she doesn't want to spend time with him. And, yeah, he, like, kidnaps her. A lot of stuff ensues. And she's a very strong final girl in this film. And the gore effects are fabulous, especially one when he captures this other guy from the office who kind of came on to her while he was drunk in a in an elevator. And man, what Wes Bentley does to that guy, whoo, you will never forget it. Some great practical effects in this movie, P2. I highly recommend checking this one out for the holiday season, especially if you haven't seen it. Coming in at number nine, we have from 2015, Krampus, probably one of the greatest casts out of all the films on this list. Such a fabulous cast. We have Tony Collette. Adam Scott, we have Allison Tolman in here, like there's just a great cast in this film. And I like this one because it's got a good vibe to it, an atmosphere, it feels cold. I like the creature design for Krampus being it, it's all practical and stuff like that. The kills are really good in this film too, and I like the 
kind of whimsical nature it has, you know what I mean? But it's dark. It's a dark film, but it's got like a whimsical nature. My favorite scene, though, is probably when the sister's trying to get to the boyfriend's house. And you see Krampus hopping on the rooftops. And it's like the saturation blue goes from like a lighter white blue to like a very dark, deep kind of nighttime blue and oh man that's such a great scene my only real problem with Krampus that I ever had and why it's not higher up on this list is because the last 10 to 15 minutes I really don't enjoy those but the last final bit of the third act I'm not a big fan of but the rest of this film is very strong and that's why it's sitting here in the top 10 because like I said those first two acts the cast the practical effects and designs of the characters really earns the spot for Krampus. Coming in at number eight, we have Better Watch Out, and this one's currently streaming on Pluto TV or Tubi, and I actually am going to be on the Voices from Mausoleum podcast where we dive more in depth into this film, so make sure you swing over to that YouTube channel, The Voices from the Mausoleum, and on Saturday, uh, she's gonna be having a video premiere where we talked about Better Watch Out, so it's, it was a really fun time, but like I said, it's sitting here at number eight, because after multiple watches, it has climbed up my Christmas horror list. This is such an amazing film. A very easy way to describe this one is a Christmas horror kind of home alone, home invasion type film with a very nice, fabulous twist in the middle act and some really good young cast in here. The cast is great and they got good chemistry, great Christmas vibes. And like I said, after the fourth time watching this film, it climbed up my list and I was like, yeah, Better Watch Out deserves to be in the top 10 of horror, Christmas horror films for me. Next up, we have Silent Night from 2012. This one's actually currently streaming on Shudder if you want to check it out. It stars Malcolm McDowell and Jamie King. And this one is actually loosely based, kind of a remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, the uh, original one from 1984. But to me, I don't really consider it like that. There are some things that are very similar. Like, you know, we have a Santa killer going around killing people. And there's a certain kill in here that is very reminiscent of Linnea Quigley's kill in the original Silent Night, Deadly Night. But I still view this Silent Night film as just a completely separate entity. And the practical effects kills in here are fucking amazing for real. And I like the design of our Santa as he's like your typical dressed up Santa, but he uses one of those clear kind of see-through Halloween masks that have like the eyes and the makeup and the little rosy cheeks and he like cuts the bottom of the mouth out and glues a beard to it and yeah that design it's a very creepy design and like I said the kills in here some of the best like there's a wood chipper kill in here amazing some guy gets shocked and he's got like Christmas lights wrapped around him and his freaking head explodes like man some of the best stuff you're gonna get and you get to see a Santa Claus running around with a flamethrower what? So yeah, Silent Night, man. This is one of those films that I recently watched and I was like, where the hell has this movie been all my life? Because I need more of this film in my life. It's so good for real. Silent Night definitely deserves this number seven spot. Coming in at number six, this might be a little bit of a hot take. It might be a little low, but it's, it's number six. It's still, it's a very respectable spot. We have Silent Night, Deadly Night from 1984. Man, this is one that I know a lot of people, this is kind of like the cult classic, the most famous one. When people talk about Christmas horror, it's usually Black Christmas and Silent Night, Deadly Night. Those are the two that always get brought up. And for a reason, this one is very sleazy. It's very dark and it's an uncomfortable film. Like I remember watching it for the first time a few years ago. And man, this film, like just, it's uncomfortable. I think it was about four years ago when I first saw this film and dived into the whole franchise. I binged them all like in one shot a few years ago. And man, Silent Night, Deadly Night is one that, yeah, you feel uncomfortable. The Billy Chapman character is such a tortured soul. And to see what happens to him, like, throughout his childhood, and then you get to him growing up. And he's a man trying to get a normal job and trying to lead a normal life. And, you know, it's just the fates, stuff that happens, and, you know, it ensues. And he becomes a crazed Santa killer. Some amazing stuff. Like, just, I like how he's running around. He's like, punish. And, like, the way he speaks, he just becomes a very a Santa on a mission he's just very much a Santa on a mission punishing naughty people and I like that aspect of this film it's almost like a Terminator like he switches the flip and becomes like a Terminator type character so man Silent Night Deadly Night sorry I got something in my eye right now but Silent Night Deadly Night yeah is just one of those films that it's a must watch now like since I've watched it four years ago or so it's a must watch now every Christmas season this one but I do fancy another one 
more than this one you're going to find up higher up on the list from the same franchise so stick around so now we're here at the top five and before we get down to that if you're new to the channel please like and subscribe so you get more videos like this it definitely helps out the channel and I can bring you some more awesome content and you get more videos like this. So coming in at number five is A Christmas Horror Story. This one's from 2015. This is an anthology horror Christmas film. And man, I was so surprised when I watched this film because it's got, you know, an anthology feel, kind of trick or treat. And all the stories are very, you know, Christmas themed heavy. We have, you know, zombie elves. We have Krampus in here. We have a Santa Claus in here. It's got amazing cast. We got William Shatner, George Buza, and Amy Forsyth. So great, great cast all around. We even have one of the characters from Wednesday. I believe the one he played Xavier. I think he's in this as a very young actor. He's in this film too. This one's currently streaming on Shudder if you want to check it out. And yeah, Christmas Horror Story just had me, especially when we get to that end. And that third act, I don't want to spoil too much about these movies if you people haven't seen them, but in that third act, man, when we get to the kind of final story that kind of bridges all the stories together, because William Shatner is our radio DJ, and he's kind of talking throughout the film. He's kind of the, the story that bridges all of them together, and when you find out how it ties in together, oh man, because it all centers around this town, Bailey Down, which is a small town, and all the stories take place there. And yeah, the, the tie-in is fabulous. I keep saying that and talking about it because that was what made it. That final scene, this is one of the films on this list that has such a great just ending shot. Final scene really captivates and, you know, pulls you in and cements it as a fantastic Christmas horror film. Coming in at number four, for me, probably the most underrated film on this list because not a lot of people talk about this movie and more people need to be talking about it. And this is Christmas Evil from 1980 starring Brandon Magritte and this one's currently streaming on Tubi or Shudder that's where you can check this one out and this is kind of how I would describe this one a Joker type film but with a Santa killer we have Brandon Magritte who plays a toy maker who did have a kind of traumatic experience when he was younger with a Santa Claus and seeing something very naughty that you're not supposed to see it affects him deeply and he kind of holds on to it but he is able to kind of become a normal man in some fashion. He gets a normal job, he's the manager of the toy shop, and he enjoys Christmas so much. It's his favorite time of year, but we get to see him really downward spiral into a psychosis, and man, when we get to that third act, or the second and third act, when he's going wild and he's going out trying to give gifts to children and be a nice man, and then when naughty stuff starts to happen or people start to bug him, some of the kills in here are great. And like I said, it's mainly Brandon Magritte's performance as he goes into that downward spiral as a crazy Santa killer. It's just fabulous. And you feel so sorry for him because he's one of those characters that he doesn't des really deserve what's happening to him. He's just kind of, he's like, you know, a variable that got caught in a very perfect storm. You know what I mean? And it turned him into what he is. Very similar to Billy Chapman's character in Silent Night, Deadly Night. But I think Christmas Evil handles it better. It's got better acting and better character development. And that's why I have this film sitting up higher. And it's at this number four spot because I highly respect this film. And like I said, I think a lot more people should be talking about this movie. Plus the ending shot is such a fantastic, whimsical, kind of dreamy shot that it just makes the film feel wholesome, which is weird. It feels wholesome but it's like a horrible ending. You know what I mean? It's just, it's crazy. But yeah, totally recommend checking out Christmas Evil if you haven't seen this one. Now, bringing us into the top three, we have Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. I told you there was another one from that franchise that was going to creep up into my list. And Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, the reason it's up here this high is because it has all the best moments of that first film, which is like a lot of it. It has all the kills. It has a lot of the story background about Billy. But then it has Eric Freeman in here playing Ricky. And oh man, it's some of the best bad acting I've ever seen in my freaking life. And I love it. I adore it. Like for real, those scenes when he's sitting with the therapist kind of guy and he's recording him and Eric Freeman's telling him the story and just the dialogue between them is fucking hilarious. Like he's like, shoot, it's on your dime. Like Eric Freeman and his eyebrows, his movement, just everything. His delivery is perfect. This film doesn't necessarily ooze 
Christmas theme vibes. Most more of the first film stuff has more Christmas theme stuff in it, but this one is just the performances, and especially when Eric Freeman goes wild after he kills Chip and his girlfriend, like that Chip when he kills that guy Chip with the car and the jumper cable. Woo! Off the charts. And then he gets the cop's gun and he just goes around on a rampage, you know, going postal, basically. Garbage day. Pfft, like, oh my God. There's so many epic moments that I just laughed so hard. Like, I remember the first time I watched this movie and I just laughed my ass off continuously because I couldn't believe what I was watching. But it, it just, it's one that I return to the most. Out of the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise, it's the first one that I want to watch, that I want to return to the most. So that's why I had to put it up this high on the list because it definitely deserves this number three spot to me. Now we're here at the top two and this is where I might become just a basic bitch. You know, I know it just took a play. I might just be basic right here, but these are two very strong Christmas horror themed films. And I know these are probably, you know, a majority, I would say 70% of everybody's favorites right here are going to be these top two. But number two for me is Gremlins from 1984, directed by Joe Dante and written by Christopher Columbus. And man, this film has some of the greatest practical effects. And I love the fact that this one introduced Gizmo to the world, who's such an iconic character. Even if you haven't seen Gremlins, you really, you know who Gizmo is. I like the rules in this film, you know, and like I said, the practical effects. There are some really good horror elements in this film. It's very scary at times, but it is comical. There's a very strong comedy element in here and a family element. I think this is one of those films that you can watch. You can watch with your family and you can show your kids at a pretty young, decent age because it's not, it's horror, but you can take it as more of a comedy face value type thing. It's just dark satire especially when the gremlins are all in the bar, when Phoebe Cates is trying to feed them and give them drinks and they're eating popcorn and just swinging from the lights and stuff and playing cards. Like, it's just ridiculous stuff. So it's just wild. It's one of those films that every time I return to it, I have fun. I love it. My kids love it. And it's one that I watch for the Halloween season, for the Christmas season. So Gremlins is a highly revered staple in my home and like I said one that I return to very often I believe the first time I saw this film I was probably like five or six I was really young the first time I saw this film and it's had me ever since then but coming in at number one the top dog of course 1974's Bob Clark's Black Christmas it's the king it's the king. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry to tell you guys out there. Anybody else who thinks different, I'm just kidding. You can have whatever list you want. I will totally listen to you. But for me, yeah, Black Christmas is the king, the original. I prefer to think this is the only one because the remakes, I really don't enjoy that much. This first one is just a comfort film for me. I know it's a dark, kind of tense, very mysterious thriller type film. It's got a lot of haunting images. And this film can be very uncomfortable at some times. And, but I, it's a comfort film for me because of how much I love it and how much I return to it. And this is one that I didn't really discover until I was about, I want to say in middle school. I was probably like 12 or 13 when I discovered this movie. And man, so great. Like this was one of my best friends who was into horror too. This was his favorite and he showed me it. And I was like, holy shit, dude. Like how come I've never seen this movie, man? It has an atmosphere very similar to... Uh, Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween, Black Christmas is all about the atmosphere and that Christmas vibes and our killer just being in the same home as the sorority sisters, like, and what ensues, especially like that first kill when he gets, I think it's Claire, and he gets her with the bag and then like keeps her upstairs in the rocking chair and you could kind of see her in the window. It's great. It's even like the poster for the film. That's my favorite poster for the film. So yeah. Black Christmas is one that's a very strong Christmas-themed horror film and highly deserves this number one spot. And it's easily the one that I've seen the most out of all these 12 films that I talked about today. That's easily the one that I've seen the most. And man, for real, like I can't believe that this slasher has stood the test of time. It really has. Like Bob Clark, what he crafted with this film is just fabulous because it stands the test of time when you watch it today it still has the same effect. Like I've shown new horror fans or people that haven't seen this film in the last few years, I've showed them this movie. And like I said, it still holds up to date. And that's why I love this film. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this list of going through 12 amazing 
films that I love of Christmas horror films. But like I said, this is just my list and my personal opinion. So I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section. Share your list and be sure to like and subscribe so you get more videos like this. That always greatly helps out the channel and I much appreciate all of you. And of course, Christmas is right around the corner. So I want all of you and your families to have a safe and happy day and happy holidays. Peace out.